Hey man, sitting here, it's a beautiful day. Here in beautiful South Florida. We got a beautiful Baron airplane behind us. You know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking we need to go to the Bahamas. That's a great idea. Well, come on, let's go. Whoa, whoa, slow down a little bit. We're gonna go to the Bahamas. We got a lot to do beforehand. No, 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 no. We, we got an airplane. We just, we just get an airplane. We go. I wish it were that easy. So what do you mean? What, what, what do you gotta do? All right, well look, we gotta get some paperwork together. Make sure they've got uh, customs. It's a port of entry and fuel and check all those things out. Then we've got to file our uh, customs paperwork through uh, CBP on EAPIS website. Uh, we got to make sure we have an hour notice before we leave and an hour before we return. Survival equipment, we got to get our survival equipment together along over water operations. All right, my, my head's spinning, my head's spinning already. Uh, all right, but let's just go, let's, you just show me, let's just go, let's get this done. All right, it's not that bad, step by step. Bravo Papa, executive clearance, cleared the Stellamaris Airport, via radar vectors, BAMA, and then is filed. Climb and maintain 2,000. Expect 11,010 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 119.7. Squawk 4721. Verify ATIS information hotel. I do have hotel, and uh, for 291 Bravo Papa, clear to Mike Yankee Lima Sierra Airport. Via radar vectors, bomb event is filed. 2,000, 11,000, 10 minutes after. 19.7 on departure and 4721. November 1, Bravo Papa, read back correct. Contact ground for taxi. Over to ground, thank you. Executive ground, Baron 291, Bravo Papa, is on the Quebec ramp with hotel. We're going to taxi for departure. November 291, Bravo Papa, executive ground, taxi via Quebec hold short taxi vehicle. Back hole, short of echo, no problem. Can you uh, put tower in standby, please? Uh, sure, let's go to frequency. Then hit tower. Oh, wait, no, no, no not this one. It's like <laughs> 10 steps. 120.9 Nine. here, isn't it? Yeah. Seatbelt's good. Seatbelt's good. Seatbelt. We got the squawk. Box in. Transponder set. Brain clear. Fuel. Uh, Mixture of props. November 1, Bravo Papa, caution weight permit support of citation, fly heading 090, runway 9, or clear for takeoff traffic, down one to base Cherokee, expedite 10205. Okay, expedite, clear for takeoff, runway 9090, after departure 1, Bravo Papa.
Head to Joe Cafe Station, India Car and Altimeter 3013, East Cost for Birds 10205. Ah, gauge is green. Airspeed's alive. Ready for knots? Positive rate, you're up, please. Positive rate, right, you're up. November 1, Bravo Papa, contact my mid-departure, 119.7, have a safe flight. Over departure, 1, Bravo Papa, thanks, have a good day. Good day. Go ahead, your radio's now. Good morning, my mid-departure, Baron 2901, Bravo Papa, 900 for 2000. Baron 2901, Bravo Papa, my mid-departure, right now. Climbing 3001, Bravo Papa. It's an all aircraft, ADIS India, Fort Lauderdale, the second of airport, out to runner 3013. ADIS information, India at Pompano Airport, as well, out to runner 3013. November 291, Bravo Papa, contact Miami, approach 126.05. 2605, one Bravo Papa. Is this the approach, right? Yeah. Good morning, Miami Approach. Baron 291, Bravo Papa, 1.7, climbing 3000. Baron 291, uh, Bravo Papa, Miami Departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 5000. Climbing 5000, 1 Bravo Papa. Okay. Citation 7, X ray Romeo, climb and maintain 16000. X ray Romeo up to 16000. Somebody 4,000 feet ahead of us, Southwest Airlines. Better watch out, we're coming in hot. <laughs> See, I got a fighter jet on here, right? You better move. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> There's our... The big picture of our flight. Is there any disadvantages of flying IFR? I find it adds more time. A lot of people tend to prefer VFR flights over IFR flights because the biggest complaint is, oh, it adds time. I think I'm flying IFR is by far easier. That's, that's me. You don't have to worry about clouds. You don't have to worry about airspace. You don't have to worry about doing anything you're not supposed to do. Uh, get yourself in trouble. Everything is set out for you, everything's planned ahead of time, and to me it's just easier. Less headaches, less to worry about, um, and, and I can see why some people think that, uh, a thousand to go, um, I can see why some people think think that VFR might be a little bit easier without having to deal with ATC as much, but to me I'd rather, I'd rather uh, keep it IFR and no, no worries in my, my opinion. What about you? What's your experience? You know, that's kind of that's kind of high. I mean, even in domestic flights, I always prefer IFR over VFR. And uh, on occasion, I do find IFR can add a little bit of time. Sometimes it can delay your departure. Um, I've had on, on a few occasions where my approach gets drawn out a little more. But my view on it is simply, um, if my approach is getting drawn out, not so much departure. Departures can just be a matter of the system being busy and has nothing to do with actual traffic in my area but I, my attitude is on approach if if my if i'm being routed out and it's, it's extending it that means there's so much traffic in, in the area in a pattern that i'm okay with it because that means there's another set of eyes looking out for me 
because as much as everyone thinks they see all the traffic in VFR, I mean, here we got the sun in our eyes right now, you have blind spots in an airplane, uh, you know, sometimes you just don't see the traffic. And so for me, having a one... Climbing one one, 11,000, one, Bravo Papa. United 1778, contact Miami Center 133.4. Yeah, so I, I agree with everything you just said. Like for short, short flights, uh, like repositioning to another airport or something like that, no big deal. Um, and even if, uh, even if you, you know, it's, it's good weather and you're just going for maybe like an hour flight somewhere within the state and you want to pick up VFR advisories or something like that, um, still, uh, you know, still no big deal but for any significant any significant flight or you have to get into a busy airport or something like that I think IFR is the way to go Card 4447 clear to permit permit to so we have a whole lot of safety equipment on board by the way I thank you for that I am I am very <laughs> grateful Nothing more useless than the safety equipment you don't have. <laughs> Not like nothing more useless than the runway behind you or the airspace above you. Right. So, but um, as far as requirements are concerned, November one seven X ray Romeo. We we have a whole lot. I kind of feel like we have more than what's required. So, what's your take on on what's required versus what you chose to carry? Like, what's required and why do we have so much? Yeah. So. Um, Doing a little bit of research to find out exactly what the FAA requires for overwater flights was a little, amb a little seven, ambiguous six, eight, uh, for small aircraft route, under flying in Part 91. Advisory, to copy. Um, so uh, some to copy some resources copy. said seven, six, showed eight, that for Earth, Part 91 clear, small aircraft uh, didn't require any seven, eight, any uh, survival zero. equipment. Tazno, some Tazno, literature Tazno, said Alpha, it did Sierra, require. November, um, Oscar. Light vests and Join over like over seven, uh, niner, gliding five, distance, and medium, if you're November, 30 minutes India, or Bravo, 100 nautical Echo, miles Oscar, away from a shore, that uh, the rafts were Sierra. required, and, and along with other survival equipment. So for small aircraft part 91, it's a little ambiguous as far as that goes, I think. Um, I'm sure you'll probably get some comments from from your viewers that say, what are you talking about? It's not, uh, it's not ambiguous, it's obvious. So, I don't know. Not my subscribers. My subscribers are great. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but one thing that is for sure is the Bahamas definitely requires flotation devices for passengers when you're in the Bahamas. Um, so that's a bohemian rule. Yes, that is that is for sure. Um, and then, uh, as far as common sense, um, I think anytime you're over a significant body of water, you'd be pretty foolish not to have um, some reliable survival equipment. So American 1533 um, cleared to Wilmington. So the stuff that I like to have, but I always want to have, and I and I've pretty much made it. The standard practice, um, if I'm going to be flying over any kind of bodies of water, wing seven, six, eight, you are not able I, uh, to I have a raft that I drill. bought, uh, a, a six-person raft, cool. and it has some survival equipment seven, seven, in the raft as part of the part of the package. Um, and then I also have a ditch bag, which has a, uh, a locator beacon and survival equipment and some extra life vests. Uh, like um, but I also have all the light vests at each seat position in the plane. So that's what I think. To me, that's bare minimum. So what should I expect? All right, so here we are. We, uh, we're flying. Uh, obviously, we have to uh, go into a point of entry before we can go anywhere else. So when we get to that point of entry, we get to uh, the Bahamas Customs. Because I guess it's Customs and Immigration. Uh, what's that like? Yeah, so uh, normally it's really, really smooth. Um, as long as you have your paperwork and you have cash uh, to pay for the uh, landing fees, it's, uh, it's pretty smooth. So the, what, what uh, almost every port in the Bahamas requires is an inbound uh, general declaration, an outbound when you're leaving uh, general declaration, and um, most of the uh, airports have their own arrival report, which you can fill out there. 
if it's a place you fly to regularly, then you can take a, a blank copy and then have it all filled out before you go. But um, but the uh, worst case scenario, you can fill some of that paperwork out when you get there. But it's much easier and much safer to have it all done before you go. So, uh, so yeah, so let's take a step back for a minute. So, uh, Border Patrol for U.S. when you're leaving. So the requirements for that. <coughs> so, um, Border Patrol has a, uh, a website and it's called EAPIS. E A P I S. So you can go on there, register. You get an, you set up an account. You put all your uh, airplane information and things like that in there. And <coughs> excuse me. And um, register. You file your basically your flight, all your passenger information, and that has to be filed a minimum of one hour before your departure, and a minimum of one hour before your return. So I have to let the U.S. know that I'm leaving the country before I actually leave the country. Correct, so you file EAPIS for your outbound and your inbound flight. Traffic not available. Um, again, at least an hour before you depart. And then on your return, this is the most uh, crucial as far as the- 291 Bravo Papa traffic at your 11 o'clock and four miles northeast on McKinney 3000. We're looking for traffic, one Bravo Papa. Way below us. Yeah. Um, so the so the most crucial part is on your return, making sure that you call. Number two nine one Bravo Papa. Can you uh, switch to guard frequency and let me know if you're picking up an ELT? Affirmative. We'll uh, get back to you in a second. Make sure, Bonnie. Go ahead. Yeah. Miami 1 Bravo Papa, we're picking it up, but we've got a brake squelch to hear it, so it's not uh, terribly strong. Miami Baron 1 Bravo Papa, I'm sorry, did you copy that? And over 291 Bravo Papa, affirmative, I got that. Let's just hope that's an accidental, uh, yeah, hopefully that's from American 2370, discrepant. 404, Papa Juliet, contact my... So you're saying? 128.6. Yeah, so, uh, so the most crucial is making sure that you get that arrival confirmation at least an hour before you return to, uh, before you land in, uh, wherever you're, whatever port of entry you're returning to in the U.S. So here's an important, uh, distinction to make. So when you're filing EAPIS, you have to file a, a departure airport that is a customs port of entry. But you can leave from any airport. You just have to clarify in your paperwork that the nearest customs port of entry is the one that you're filing in your EAPIS. You're referring to when you leave the Bahamas. When you when you leave the United States. Leave the United States. Yeah, so when you're leaving the United States, for example, when, when I was based at uh, North Perry Airport, North Perry Airport is not a port of entry. So I could depart from Perry, but as far as the APIS was concerned, I had to file that I was leaving from a port of entry, which the closest one there was Opalaka. So I filed that uh, the Bear nearest was Opalaka, but then Almost there's a comments of actual place of departure, and in that I would specify that I was leaving from Perry. So, so that's an important point, but then on your return, you don't have a choice. You have to return to a port of entry, which again, when I was based at Perry, was Opalaka. Now that I'm at Executive, it's a little, Fort Lauderdale Executive, it's a little bit easier because it is a port of entry. Um, so you have to return to a port of entry on your return, and you have to have that arrival confirmation um, via telephone a minimum of one hour before your arrival. So that can be a little tricky, though. I mean, the Bahamas isn't exactly notorious for for having the best internet, telephone, and cell phone service. Yes. So yes, it can be a challenge. So typically, what I do if it's a short flight, and I know exactly when I'm going to be leaving, and if it, basically if it's going to be a quick turnaround, if I'm going and coming right back, then I can file both the outbound and the inbound at the same time, and I can get the arrival confirmation before I leave. Um, and because often I'm leaving early in the morning, which is before 
uh, the customs office is even open. So I'll, I'll typically do it the night before, like I did uh, for this trip. Um, but if you're going on, say, a you know weekend or a week away, and if you can find somebody with a phone that will call the U.S. Um, the, the cell coverage is weird. Like, I have AT&T. And I'll, I'll get a signal in the Bahamas. Of course, it, it's expensive for international roaming if you don't have an international rate plan. Um, but I can't always call the U.S., so I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not up to speed on exactly how all the cell, cell coverage works and all that with, as it pertains to the Bahamas. Um, but I've definitely had a hard time calling. But sometimes you can, um, you know, one of your contacts in the Bahamas or whatever will have a phone that will call the U.S. and you can do it that way. Apparently, um, you can also... If, if you're calling, let's say you're leaving early in the morning and uh, the airport that you would normally arrive through is closed, there's a, uh, there's a, a number for the 24-hour customs offices, like for Miami International down here, where you can call them, and because they're open 24 hours, they can give you the arrival confirmation for the airport that you're going to be arriving in. So that's, uh, that's another option, and I didn't know about that in the beginning, so I had a few close calls with trying to um, get in touch with uh, them for an arrival confirmation, but that, that's an option also. And you can just pick up, if you know you're leaving on Friday, you're coming home on Sunday, you can just get the confirmation before you leave on Friday for a Sunday return? Exactly, and if, if for some reason your time changes, typically if, if it's within an hour of what you filed, they're okay with uh, you arriving, but if it's going to be more than an hour, off of uh, what you filed or what your arrival confirmation was, they want a phone call. So just for clarification, you, you can two, Mike or cannot Miami Center, one, two, five, pick up your seven, return confirmation on a Friday when you're returning on a Sunday? I haven't done it that far out, but I don't think they would have a problem with it. Um, but if you call the office and just say, hey, I'm coming back, but I don't know if I'm going to have cell coverage, um, they've always been super helpful with uh, answering questions and it, also immigration questions like if you have any friends that you're flying with that have maybe green cards or or questionable immigration status calling them and, and just getting clarification by calling the CBP office um, they've been great with information so they're a good resource then if, if you have questions you haven't done this before don't hesitate to call them is what you're saying absolutely yeah call and say um, and sometimes they're busy so I call and say, do you have time for a couple questions? And sometimes they'll say, can you call back in a little bit? Or sometimes they'll say, yeah, yeah, what do you, what do you need, whatever. So, And you can just run through your list of questions. They're like, okay, this is the first time I've left. I think I need to do this, this, that, and the other. Um, does that sound right? And they'll, you know, they'll steer you in the right direction. Excellent. So they're not out to get you? No. <laughs> <laughs> They feel like that sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it does feel like that. But, but they're not really out to get you. More often than not, they've been very helpful. So we talked about, uh, or you mentioned actually, um, fees in, in the Bahamas. And so um, so I guess there, there's some fees that, that you have to be prepared for when, when you're flying down there. So there's, um, so there's I guess, a, a customs fee. That, that's a one-time fee. Uh, well, no, you have a fee on the way in and fees on the way out. Okay, so there's two custom fees going to the Bahamas. I'm not sure if both fees are customs or if one is a landing fee and then the customs fees are on the way out. Um, but nonetheless, there's, but so there's nonetheless, two fees. There's fees. So you're paying a fee to get and a fee to yeah. get way out. Okay. And uh, and is there a landing fee of sort um, when you go when you land either at your initial airport or if you hop from, from uh, island to island? Yeah, as far as I know, is uh, when you land, you pay the one landing fee when you clear, and I don't think you have to pay landing fees at the other airports, but it, it's been a while since I island hopped, so I can't say that definitively. Um, but be prepared for the fees in and out. And most of the airports um, require cash. A few do have FBOs uh, where you can pay through credit card, and some also have fuel. Um, but another consideration for the fuel is um, the Bahamas has a, a VAT tax on top of whatever fee you pay or whatever whatever price you're paying. Um, so it's and then if you pay by credit card, sometimes there's a credit card fee. So sometimes it's definitely cheaper to pay pay cash. 
but a lot of the airports don't have the option of credit card and you have to pay by cash, so definitely be prepared for that. So be prepared to be for, say, fuel and cash, um, landing fees and cash, any customs fees. Um, be well prepared. Definitely. And then, um, I don't know if you know the answer or not, I assume there, the fees may vary if you're in a twin engine versus single engine, so you might want to call and... Yeah, I think it is a little bit more for a twin engine. Uh, so if, if, you're not, if you're not sure and you need to know exactly, definitely call and find out exactly what the fee schedule is. 57,000 bombers there, 2, 3, 5, thank you. Good advice. It would be ill-advised to be caught down there without cash and no way to pay. Yeah, that, Especially government fees. I, I wouldn't want to uh, be in that predicament. <laughs> Gamma Jet 829, Nassau. Gamma Jet 829. Climb and maintain 1-2000 and stand by. Oh, that's pretty over there. Woohoo! This! This is the only reason I came on this flight right here. <laughs> uh, Peanut butter jelly oh, time, nice peanut butter too. jelly time. <laughs> and Gamma Jet 829, which code will you give I'll give up. I'll give, give up the life here I can't, uh, for some of these. Just bring these Four, if you, five, if you three, can't seven, break a life, uh, life raft, Foxtrot, Lima, Lima. bring Four, some up Gustables. Roger, turn left on a heading of uh, 360, uh, Gamma Jet 829. That's cold. 360, Gamma Jet 829. So as always, uh, if you like my videos and you like the uh, this extra little information I'm giving you, uh, be sure to give me that thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button for those of you who haven't. And uh, go ahead and put in the comments uh, anything regarding the video. If you have any, any questions, um, I'll try to refer to my resident here and, uh, and answer them for you. Uh, or uh, tell me your experience. Uh, for those of you who have flown to the islands of Bahamas, um, what did you discover? Is it pretty much uh, what we're saying, or did you have a little bit different experience? So, um, anything we can do to, to help out the aviators is always uh, is always much appreciated. So, and for those of you who want to follow me on other social media, um, of course, there's always the Facebook Parent Pilot page. And then on Instagram is uh, Beach Bear and Pilot. Instagram. And of course, to uh, my patron uh, followers, uh, I thank you very much. Uh, your support is much, much appreciated. And uh, it, it goes towards uh, you know, creating uh, videos and uh, flights like this. So um, thank you again for your support. You're just gonna wait till the end and do a face leg. <laughs> Trade in with a base leg? Yeah. Trade in with a circle to land. <laughs> <laughs> And it's pretty. That's the resort right there, I think. Uh, Cape Santa Maria with those little huts. Or cabanas or whatever they are. I need stabilizer.
Stellamaris traffic, Farron is now 5 mile final for runway 13 Stellamaris. short is that runway? <laughs> oh, the one on Hog? Yeah. It looks like a decent size now. Oh, no, it's... <laughs> uh, I don't know. You're coming down. Green mirror. Flaps 10. Okay, gear, full flaps to go, make sure props throttles. Flaps coming down the rest of the way. <laughs> you know the best part of this landing was? What? Right as we touched down, the batteries for the headset di uh, died. Nice. So I had noise canceling right up until touchdown. That's funny. So, I hope you uh, enjoyed this flight. Welcome to the Bahamas. So as always, if you uh, like my videos, give me that thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button. Biggest thank you I can get is that subscribe button. Um, and uh, be sure to uh, leave comments down below. And, uh, and if you enjoyed this video, also uh, keep an eye out for the return and which we'll talk about um, what you got to do to come back into the states as well. So keep an eye out for that. Still Mars traffic, Baron is clear of the active. So thanks again, and a uh, special thank you to my patron supporters. And uh, as always, always, if you want to follow me on social media, you have uh, Baron Pilot page at Facebook, and you have Beach Baron Pilot Instagram. So. Anyhow, thank you for coming along, and I'll see you in the next one.